Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth um, row of the Let Freedom Rink sew along. This month we're making the Flying Geese row, which I named the Freedom Flyer block um, in the pattern. So if you turn to page nine, that's uh, the pattern for this specific block. And today I'm gonna show you um, how to make four flying geese with uh, no waste. So this is a pretty popular method. It's one that I don't use often. Um, I think just it's more convenient to use the other w method that has some waste. But I decided to include this method in the book um, because I know some people prefer this way. So let's get started. Um, you're going to need your large square and when making your four flying geese you want to make sure um, in the pattern I'm using a substitute print to show you how to make the block but the actual pattern uses these two prints I just wanted to mention that because I know some of you are making it exactly like uh, the picture all right, so to start, you need a marking tool and a ruler. We're gonna take our A square, we're gonna layer our B squares on opposite corners. Let me move this up a little. So I wanna mention we have this overlap. This is super important, um, so don't worry if it seems weird to you. If you've never made this, done this method. So what I'm gonna do is I've lined up my ruler on a diagonal from corner to corner. I'm gonna mark my line. Whoops, see I was a little bit off, so I'm gonna remark it. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pins. Uh, normally I don't pin, but for this, technique I think it's a good idea and if you pin um, perpendicular or not perpendicular parallel to your uh, line you don't have to remove your pins as you sew whoops and I um, you could mark these all before like you put them on here you don't have to mark them together it's just a habit that I've picked up doing so as you can see I'm having a great time pinning these <laughs> I'm not a pinner usually okay so what you're gonna do take this to your machine and you're gonna sew quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on this side okay so I've sewn um, my lines and now I'm going to take my ruler and line it up corner to corner and cut on the original line that I marked. So now you have these two pieces and they're kind of funky. I know when I learned this method it was kind of confusing Whoops, sorry, to me at first. So you're going to take this to your iron and you're going to carefully press. I'm going to do that really quick. Try not to um, stretch your fabric as you're doing this because we are working with bias lines. So I want to show you this. This is a straight of grain. You can see there is some give, but not a ton. But this long line, diagonal line, is bias. And look at how much you can stretch it. So knowing that you have a lot of stretch, you want to be super careful when you press. Take your time. Don't like iron it back and forth a million times. Just press it. Okay. So I've done both of those. So you have two of these interesting looking blocks. 
and you might be saying to yourself, what the heck is this and what do I do with it? That's what I said when I first made these a long time ago. Um, so we're going to set those aside and we're going to mark our other two um, B squares. Now, when, so I've made my entire row already and the most time efficient method is to do all your marking at once, uh, chain piecing everything at once, cutting apart everything at once, pressing, and so forth. So that, I know I say that probably every video, but it's true. That's what's gonna be the most time eff efficient. Um, okay, so now I have my piece here and I'm going to take my B square and I want my diagonal line going this way. And we're not going to sew on this line. You're going to sew a quarter inch away on both sides because once we do that, we'll cut the middle and you can see we'll have a flying geese that goes this way. And when we cut this We'll have a flying geese there. So that will give us two and then our other two. So you can pin, take this to your machine and do both pieces. Okay, so I just did my sewing. I wanna show you guys, I didn't mention this, but you can see how we have again overlap and there's even some overlap where there's no fabric at all. So that's completely normal, that's what you want. So, take my piece here and I'm gonna line up on my marked line. Cut these apart and cut this one apart. So that gives us four flying geese units. Now, oh, these are still attached. Okay, so I'm gonna take and press this really quick so I can show you exactly what to do next. You will need to do trimming on this block. It's just a fact of life. <laughs> um, if you are familiar with block lock, uh, this is a two and a half by four and a half inch that you want to trim down to. I do not have a block lock flying geese ruler that size, which is totally fine. So I'm gonna show you how to square it up using just a square ruler. Now, I'm going to kind of move in a little closer. Okay, so like I said, we want a four and a half. This is a four and a half inch wide. So you can see I've got plenty of room to trim. Now we wanna be smart about our trimming. You always have to trim both of these sides. If you think, oh, I just need to trim this side, I'll just go and trim right here and the bottom. Okay, that's not gonna work because if you trim off, right now we have a nice point. We want to trim it so we always keep this nice point right here, okay? So let's say, oh, we're just going to trim this side. That's what we're going to have. And then this side will look like this. That's not going to work. So I know it can be frustrating and time consuming to do trimming, but it's necessary. Sorry, I got like something on, some glue on my ruler. I'm trying to get off. Okay. So what we need to do is figure out, okay, what is half of four and a half, which um, is two and a quarter, which, let me get my, like a pointer here. Two and a quarter line is right here. Our two and a quarter line needs to line up with the point of our flying geese. So this space right here, we want to, if possible, trim as small amount as possible. If we, if we do, need a lot of trimming, I recommend, or I prefer trimming from the bottom. Okay, so we wanna leave as much space here because 
let me get my row, we wanna keep our points. You can see I have a nice point there. Obviously I'm not perfect. That one's kind of, you know, missing, but you know, we sew for joy, not perfection. So um, I do try and keep my points if possible. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my two and a quarter inch mark and I'm gonna go up and you can see, oh, let me move this up a little. You can see that I have two and a half, the two and a half mark is this dotted line right here. So I'm going to need to trim all the way around my block which is probably the best way to make sure you've got a nice square block or a rectangle in this case. Okay, so if you have a rotating mat, I recommend for sure using that. So I'm gonna just apply some pressure. I'm not trimming very much off here because I really need a quarter inch to keep my point. Apply pressure to your ruler, trim two sides, rotate, let me move this up. Sorry, I've got a glare on my light. Trim that side. Okay, so I'm gonna have to readjust my ruler because as you can see, I have some space here and we know that I'm a little wider than two and a half. So now what I'm gonna do is line this up. And as you can see, this line right here, this diagonal line, is lining up with the one side of my flying geese. And if you pay close attention this is an Ulfa. I don't know if this is on all rulers, but this is my Ulfa ruler. This point right here is the middle of this ruler, which just so happens to land perfectly on my flying geese unit where it needs to be. So now I'm gonna apply some pressure and I'm gonna trim my last side, which now gives me my perfect two and a half by four and a half inch flying geese. So you're going to make, let me grab my book. You're gonna make 15 of the, let me grab this, of the blue and 15 of the red. Now with this method, you get four at a time. So you will have an extra blue and an extra red. You can just put that in your, um, scrap bin if you have like a block scrap like a block I call it like my orphan blocks where I do testing I just have a bin with those so um I find it's super important to not skip out on that trimming step um I still have my three other pieces that I need to press and trim but the fact that there's no waste or very little waste, I mean, this is all that we trimmed off that little block, so not much at all. So it's definitely something I recommend trying. If it's not your favorite method, then um, you can definitely do the waste method where you do a lot more trimming. You would just need to have more fabric because there is some waste. So I think that's all for today. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, next month, we're doing this row, which is a favorite of mine. Really fun and easy row. So I look forward to that, and I will see you next time.